Hey guys, in today's video we're going to look into a gradient tool in Affinity Designer version 2.2. I'm going to use a desktop version of the software, but it's similar on the iPad version. Keep in mind, the gradient tool is rather similar across the whole family, so whatever you use Affinity Photo or Publisher, some of those tips may apply to those programs as well. So let's take a look. Here I am in the document and I already use gradient tool on different shapes. As you can see here, the very first shape. Let me just zoom in a bit. I like to zoom in by pressing Command Plus on my keyboard. Here it is. This is a very base gradient. We can apply this kind of gradient by clicking on the shape. And then we got two choices. We can head to the toolbar on the left and search for the gradient tool and you can simply draw a gradient and take a look. Even though I did not apply the gradient just yet, it's already showing me the outlook of it. That's one of a uh, kind of cool features of the software. You cannot see it very often. It's not a standard across uh, different programs. So that's a really nice thing that we can preview live gradients. That's something that we need to give point to Affinity Software. All right, I put this gradient in here, but now I want to modify the color. Let's click this color spectrum at the top. We see the first point is here. All right, let's modify that. And then the second point at the end, we can change color of this as well, no problem. What if I need to add another point? Just click in between. It will add a point for you and you can uh, once more change the color of that spot as well. So we change the color of it, saturation and also a lightness. And there's one more slider below that I really like to use with darker colors. So let's move back here at the end. There's also noise slider. So that's how easy it is to add a noise to the color in the gradient. Really nice and easy process here. And this way we create a gradient with three colors and that's the linear one. You see the gradient type over here? So colors follow a line. We've got first color, second one and third in a line like that. Of course we can apply this line on a different angle. We can rebalance them so the color can be stronger on one side. By default, it will be 50%, but we can rebalance that, no problem. All right, so that's the linear gradient. But we can apply a different type. So let's try again here. And this time, let's open the type menu first. There's elliptical and radial gradients. They are rather similar, as you can notice right now. They will span from the center to the side. So we've got one color in the center and another color on the side, like a circle shape. So this is a radial gradient, very handy. Next one, I'm going to apply the elliptical one. And as you may notice, at first it will look identical, but we got a bit more control here. All right, so at first you can see that it's rather similar, but we can definitely have a bit more control. We got those double sliders so we can alter the shape a bit to match our needs. By the way, if you put a wrong color inside the gradient, you don't need to reach it, redraw that. You can click this reverse gradient button at the top. That's really handy. All right, and the last one I wanna show you here, that's the conical one, and it's a bit different, take a look. It's more like we're looking at the cone from the top. And if you apply this in a certain way, you can have even a very sharp transition between colors, almost like a solid line, as I did it here, take a look. Okay, so we got different gradients we can apply. We can reverse them anytime. But what if we need the mesh gradient? Can we do it here? 
actually not really. There's no tool for vector mesh gradient in Affinity Designer. But what we can do is we can apply two gradients of different directions on the same shape. So if I get one gradient just like that, okay, and then I apply another gradient inside the same, same shape. So if you head to appearance on the right side, you may notice that there's stroke that I do not use in that case and there is also a fill. We fill this one with a gradient but I can add additional fill to it. Alright, so now I can give it another gradient. Let's give it a radial one. It's at the top so I can see only this one right now. Let's modify this a bit. All right, so we got the second gradient. And now we can actually play a bit with transparency opacity of this whole gradient to get the one below up. So they both mix together and we got a unique gradient mix of two different gradients. So one thing we can do, we can change the blending mode. That's something that can mix two gradients together. All right, take a look. This one is showing me both gradients same time. So you can check the blending mode. That's one thing. Another way will be to just reduce the whole opacity. So if I make this second gradient, the one above semi-transparent, it will show the gradient below and of course on the top of that we can change that blending mode as well. So it's a bit tricky but at the end of the day you should be able to get some unique gradient by mixing two of them in the appearance panel as well. And they still stay as vector gradients so that's a really useful stuff for us. I say we got two options while applying gradient. We already use option A, so we pick the gradient tool from the tool panel on the left. What if you got a solid color and you want to change that to gradient? You can just select a shape. You see the fill color at the top. You can click on that. And from here, you can also search for the gradient and you can apply it from here. By default, it should use the color from the solid one as the base for your gradient. So that's going to be really handy because I, if I know that I'm going to make a gradient from an, like navy blue, I can draw the shape in navy blue and then use the gradient tool on it. And I already got this original color, the navy blue in it, and I can just modify the second color. All right, so that's really, really handy. Keep in mind, we can copy the gradient from one object to another. If I now copy this object, so I will use shortcut for that, Command C or Control C on Windows, select another shape. And if I go to edit here, I can paste. This will paste the whole shape, not what I want. I will just paste a style. Take a look. I managed to copy the gradient from one object to another. Nowadays, in version 2, we can also use a style picker tool. So there's a color picker tool, the old one, and now we got style picker tool that will pick gradients as well. So we can easily spread the same gradient around a document. Of course, nothing will stop us from actually keeping this in swatches. So as you can see in swatches, I can see all of my recent gradients. That's handy, but if I want to keep it for later, I can even add the current fill to the palette. Be sure the object of the gradient is selected. And here it is. I add it to my swatches and now I can reuse it as much as I want. All right. So that's how you can apply gradients in Affinity software. I hope this video was useful. 
Don't forget to check the whole playlist, the more than 100 videos for Affinity Designer. I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!